Hello everyone and good morning. This is Maros Berlakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting the 25th uh, complex coronary intervention webcast. Today it's our great honor to have uh, uh, the presenter being Professor George Sianos from Greece. Dr. Sianos is one of the best idiopathers in the world who has taught uh, many, many people in many, many countries and uh, has um, proctored many people in uh, all over the world. He's going to present us some case today and discuss some uh, challenging CTO techniques. Before we get started, I will just have to thank our sponsors, The Rumor and Abbott Vascular. And without further ado, George, welcome, and we're delighted to have you on the webcast. Manos, uh, thank you. It's uh, a great privilege to connect with you and uh, present of, uh, our experience. Uh, we have prepared uh, three cases for you today. Two of them are of the uh, last two days, uh, and uh, the other one is a little bit more, uh, a couple of months old. And um, uh, all of them, they are going to be focusing on the treatment of bifurcation CTOs in a different scenario. So the first case uh, is uh, a patient. Uh, he was treated in India uh, some, some days ago. George, how do I go further down? And uh, it was a very young guy uh, that he came with an acute coronary syndrome into the cath lab. He had diagnostic catheterization during, uh, uh, it was during a, a meeting and uh, he, he was not even planned. And um, uh, we found out uh, from uh, the angiogram, as you will see here, this picture. Uh, so it is a patient that he has a, a serious left main disease and uh, occluded uh, left anterior descending coronary artery. And uh, I think the acute coronary syndrome uh, was related uh, to the appearance of the left main uh, uh, to, with the lesion uh, directing into the circumflex. Also, you can appreciate that severe calcification of this uh, OCLLAD lesion. So uh, the next thing is that uh, from the uh, coronary angiogram uh, was the right injection, and you can appreciate here that there is extensive collateralization uh, to uh, the left anterior descending artery by septal collaterals uh, with uh, the CC2 connections. The patient was uh, discussed acutely. Yes. Mano? I can hear you. I can hear you perfect. Yes, yes. So. Uh, we faced this diagnostic angiogram, and then uh, uh, it was a big family there, and it was briefly discussed, uh, as I told you, it was going on through a uh, live meeting, and what was became absolutely uh, obvious is that the family by no means was prepared uh, to uh, undergo uh, and the patient uh, coronary, coronary artery bypass surgery. So we faced with uh, this coronary angiogram, and uh, then uh, they signed after some discussion about percutaneous coronary uh, intervention. I don't know if you want to make any comments. I'm not exactly yeah, actually, sure. Yeah, I think it's perfect it, because uh, just this is a great uh, thing in the United States. People really like to do bypass for these lesions still, although there is some changing now with Excel and Noble coming out. Uh, but. Uh, there's, uh, I think in this case, it looks uh, the, the way we try to present them to people here, especially beginning early in their experience, is their proximal cap and how is the distal vessel and how long is the lesion. You know, people since are not expert operators as well. So for this one, looks like a great distal vessel. You have excellent collaterals, looks like from septal and epicardials. So this, to you, looks like a favorable um, lesion to approach. Of course, we don't see the left main yet, but uh, you haven't seen the left main yet. So this is the picture of the left system here. I just presented it in the first slide. Perfect. So it's going to be okay. a little tricky <laughs> because you don't have a, um, you don't have enough uh, landing zone there. And I, I guess so. I, I know people here in the U.S. They, the IVUS guided uh, entry is not very common, but it looks mm -hmm. to me like you probably have to go retrograde over here. But another option might be to do an IVUS and locate your proximal cap, maybe. Right. But uh, there's a good chance you might need to go retrograde. But I think. The most important thing here might be to put a wire in the circ in case when you come back you have some issues uh, compromising the flow in the circumflex. Right. So uh, th these are considerations exactly as you said that IBUS guided puncture uh, is uh, one way uh, to this uh, osteal occlusion that it is stumpless. Uh, after dilating the circumflex, because as we said, the patient had an acute coronary syndrome. 
On that respect, the culprit is the lesion to the circumflex. And then you deal how, to, how you, you see how to deal with the uh, with the LAD. Uh, what we did actually uh, before we make a strategy or we plan what we're going to do uh, for myself. This is uh, 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 our setting. So we put a, a, a seven French guiding into the uh, both sides. Uh, one is an AL uh, two and the other one is an EBU. Uh, four and uh, we're making uh, some bilateral injections here. Uh, what happened? Uh, we, we decided to go immediately retrograde, as you can appreciate here. So what happened is that there is a, a wire that went into the circumflex, and uh, 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 just as as planned here, as you can appreciate. And then there was with septal surfing uh, and. Uh, uh, and a wire filter FC that is crossed uh, very easily. I don't know why the AVIs are not playing so well, uh, but it crossed very easily the septal collaterals. And what what uh, what I would like to draw your attention is that the wire with the septal surfing didn't go uh, through this big uh, septal branch, uh, but it went through an invisible branch uh, that uh, it happened just like uh, here. Uh, that's one of the weaknesses of the septal surfing, but also it's one of its powers. So what happened afterwards, as you George, can, can I, maybe for a second, yes. since you're the one who developed that surfing technique, any tips and tricks on how to do the surfing? I know you get your microcaster in, and then there's some here, some qu uh, question about whether you use a Sion or the Fielder FC or XT, any, any uh, pearls of wisdom on how to do the surfing? Yes. So w w uh, at least my approach when I am doing surfing is that I prefer to use a polymeric wire. Uh, rather than a hydrophilic, so my first choice for the settle surfing is uh, a fielder FC still. Uh, also, when I am doing surfing, is that uh, I took the, I take the wire and I keep the microcatheter away. So uh, just inserting the microcatheter very uh, close to the tip of the collateral, to the takeoff of the collateral, but I'm not pushing the collateral distal because uh, one key rule for me is even the slightest dis uh, resistance in the surfing. It's an indication that you should change the uh, the branch. Uh, the other thing is that I don't make for the surfing a dedicated curve, but I have just a curve uh, which is uh, maybe two two and a half millimeters. The curve that I'm using just to enter the uh, the, the native uh, the, the the main epicardial collateral, and I'm just surfing there uh, into into the collateral circulation with a non dedicated uh, curve. Uh, so, and whenever I have resistance, uh, I move um, the wire quite uh, vigorously, uh, but not insisting in one way, just let the wire to select the, the branch. Uh, if uh, after a minute uh, it is not successful, then I stop. I don't serve for uh, 10 minutes, I don't serve for 15 minutes. You interrogate the collateral quite fast. And if that finishes, then you have to go in more dedicated tip injections. And uh, the next step sometimes, uh, I insert the, uh, the microcatheter a little bit uh, into the collateral, and I use the Sion uh, with a dedicated curve. But uh, the main surfing thing is the uh, Fielder FC with a big curve. Yeah, that's great to hear. And then, do you um, do you use the, the torqueer for this, or you use no torqueer? What is your preferred technique for doing the surfing? Uh, no, what, what we're doing, Manos, is that uh, the uh, I am not an operator that I'm using a torque, generally speaking, uh, sure. and uh, for, for routine PCI and for the CTO. So, uh, whenever you don't use a torque, surfing is more effective, I would say, for one simple reason, uh, because if you use bare hands, uh, every rotation that you're doing is reflecting the width of the wire. When you have a tor torque, one rotation reflects the width of the torquer. So if you have a bare hand and you rotate from the tip of your finger one centimeter, you give 100 rotations to the wire. If you do that with a torquer, you give one or two. So certainly bare hands are better for the, for, for the, uh, for the surfing. And, uh, but the most important thing is that you have to sense the wire. Uh, certainly you don't push the wire and you, you rotate quite random and vigorously. But not, not 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 pushing. Perfect. And then also, most people here like to put like a one millimeter, like a small band. Looks like you prefer a little larger band, so you can work a little. No, better. it's not that I prefer it or not. But as I as I say, uh, you do select your branch in advance, and you say I will go to this branch, 
and uh, by reviewing the angiogram and then you enter the branch with a non-dedicated curve and I always surf with this non-dedicated curve. If this fails for the next uh, first 30 seconds, uh, then I advance the microcatheter and I remove the filter FC wire and I take a Sion with a dedicated curve. But you will be surprised that out of the 80% eight, of the cases, uh, uh, the, the surfing will all will be not successful uh, within these 10, 15, 20 seconds. If this fails, uh, then you have to go to more dedicated uh, things. I surf with a dedicated tip wire just like the Sion, and then I go to, uh, to tip injections. Perfect. Yeah, great, great pearls of wisdom for a technique that you developed. So thank you so much. So what happened here is that, as you can appreciate, the surfing was easy, the crossing was uh, immediate in a small branch, and we pay a price for this, as you will see here. If we had followed the brink branch that uh, uh, it was going here, uh, I think that the collateral crossing uh, with the microcatheter, which is in a Corsair, would have been much easier. Uh, but in this case, we stuck in this, uh, uh, let's say, non-visible collateral that the wire went straight. And then we had the, the problem of advancing the microcatheter. Here you see real-time fluoro storing. And uh, so we pushed the microcatheter, the wire, the field RFC buckled back. And uh, then you see we push, push, push the microcatheter. The, guide, the guiding caster also comes back, as you can appreciate. And then just to restore things a little bit, then we just kept on pushing the wire on the grade. Uh, so, and suddenly, to our surprise, the filter FC, the same wire that crosses the collateral, just jumps through the occlusion. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was uh, innovative one technique. <laughs> this is awesome. Pure retrograde wire crossing, uh, which is uh, the simplest of the retrograde techniques. And uh, it was uh, our persistence or our choice, for instance, to go to directly to the retrograde. Uh, and as a formality for the cause, I selected the retrograde as our initial strategy because of uh, the presence of very good epicardial collateral. This is one uh, parameter uh, that shifts the decision making as to select one way or the other. If the collaterals wouldn't have been so good as they were in this case, we might have been uh, attempting undergrade first to see how the, the lesion is, uh, is feeling. So uh, after doing uh, so, and we entered the circumflex, uh, you see that uh, the orientation of the <coughs> uh, of the channel was down in the direction of the circumflex, uh, but uh, the wire, uh, with an easy manipulation, was able to be redirected in the left anterior descending coronary artery. And uh, this is through the filter FC? This is still the filter FC, exactly. The wire that crossed the collaterals crossed the occlusion retrogradely, and then you see here that it makes uh, the uh, it turns the way up to the left main and enters very easily uh, the the guiding into the um, uh, the uh, the great guiding. Uh, if I just make a comment here, is this one here uh, that you see this bending of the true lumen uh, that uh, although retrogradely it's uh, relatively easy to do. But if you want to target that undergradely, you will understand the difficulty of this, that uh, it's almost impossible to do the reverse bend while you are handling the case undergradely. And of course, uh, it's going to be also extremely difficult to pinpoint that even if you see it with, uh, uh, with IVUS or whatever. So this was an easy retrograde wire crossing. And uh, after uh, doing that, and you apply the uh, trapping technique into the undergrade guiding here, then the advancement of the microcatheter uh, was uh, relatively straightforward. And uh, you see here how uh, this microcatheter actually was just able to slide through the occlusion and enter the uh, undergrade uh, guide. Uh, so in such a case, uh, uh, the retrograde choice based on the collateral circulation uh, uh, paid out, uh, I would say, in a fast and uh, effective way of uh, uh, pushing the wires. The next thing is that we... Can I ask quickly for a second? Yes, if yes. it hadn't gone well, so let's say you know, it was very good here, worked out great, but let's say you could not cross retrograde and you needed to advance the microcaster, do you use the Caravel mat these days or the Turnpike LP or what is your strategy for, for getting the microcaster through, through this tiny collateral? Yes. There, there, there are many ways. One is to change the microcaster into a new version of uh, the microcasters that they have uh, 
smaller uh, uh, thinner sh uh, shaft and we're going to present you cases with these devices uh, just after this uh, case. This was done a few months ago and it was not available. Uh, but uh, uh, one uh, choice would be to take to go in a Teruma microcatheter, uh, just like the fine cross, or uh, the Turnpike LP, uh, or the Caravel. Uh, uh, so these uh, these microcatheters uh, uh, they might go through. Although by using them more and more, and as you will see, we have many cases, and I will show you one case that actually we have to go from uh, a Caravel to a Corsair in order to be able to do the crossing going to be the next case. Uh, so okay. the use of microcatheter is not yet very well established and it's a lot of talking to be done. Or the third uh, uh, solution in this case would have been to dilate the lesion sure. uh, with a larger. small balloon and uh, retry there the uh, and retry there the uh, the same microcatheter or sometimes whenever the uh, one for instance microcatheter doesn't go you might select if the uh, Corsair 150 will not go you might take a Corsair 130 uh, that the rotational force is uh, is going uh, uh, through a shorter shaft and then it might be more efficient or uh, sometimes we know that there is a peeling of the um, uh, of the outer coating uh, hydrophilic coating and a fresh microcatheter, even of the same brand, might uh, might might go through. So you have these different options: uh, a new fresh microcatheter of the same one, of, of the same uh, size, uh, go to smaller diameter microcatheters, which are three now in the market, uh, or uh, pre-dilate with a small balloon and then try again. Uh, then the, the PCI becomes uh, just just uh, uh, for us. It, this was uh, one example: uh, pre-dilate DLAD and uh, uh, the circumflex. Uh, you see how it is looking like uh, here, and uh, it was uh, non, uh, uh, let's say, very educational. Uh, but uh, uh, there was no uh, dual lumen microcatheter available. In one of the next cases, we're going to extensively discuss that. A new filter FC went through down the LAD quite easily, as you can appreciate, just by pushing the wire. Uh, it might not be suggested. In this case, when you have true to true crossing uh, and you predilate, then potentially you create less dissected plane, and uh, then you can push a wire under greatly like that. Uh, but when you do techniques that are involving sub space connections, just like the cart or reverse cart or whatever, uh, then it is not advisable to do what you're seeing here. But you have to select dual lumen microcatheter or insert an anti-grade uh, catheter up to the point that you cross the occlusion, and then you exchange uh, the uh, microcatheter by retrieving the retrograde wire and you insert your uh, anti-grade wire to the distal true lumen. Uh, so this is a very simple, uh, but uh, sometimes not advisable uh, technique, and I analyze uh, the, the way that you have to do it uh, more elegantly and more safely and uh, by the book. Any comment to that? Yeah, and actually, I was going to ask you, so the technique here, are you planning to do any two-stand technique like a crash or or a DK crash or something, or what was your plan for, for standing this, given yes. that they're all the way to the ostium? Yes, yes, so actually here it's uh, by default uh, a left main bifurcation. Uh, so after the crossing, uh, we are going into, it was 1-1-1 Medina classification, and in this case, uh, I think the double stand technique, uh, it's a must. It's already pre-decided, at least in my view, and my, as you will see, my decision was to do just mini crash here. Okay, great. Could you have done uh, so it just with the, or the retrograde wire? I mean, did you need to do the, since you didn't have much disease in the middle lady, could you just have used the retrograde wire to do the, to do the mini crash? Or? Yes, uh, I always uh, mono tend to keep the retrograde wire in place for the stability of the catheters, and uh, uh, most of the times. But in this case, I decided not to do it. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, when you do retrograde techniques, and, and, and in, in the cases after you will see that it happened, is that uh, you should be careful not to use it as the wire to be trapped. So it should be used as the wire uh, that uh, will be so-and-so so-called main branch wire. Sure. That means that you can trap wires that you can put, but not this wire. This is something that you have to keep in mind. 
uh, in this case uh, we changed it uh, and uh, although it's not very my, my my very routine practice to do so but the intervention could have been concluded also by keeping the retrograde wire in and have it as a main wire i think i changed it because uh, i was planning to mini crush the left anterior descending coronary artery so and uh, that's what what i did and uh, here just and, and then we will continue this comment you see here that i retrieved uh, the micro catheter and i retrieved uh, also the uh, the retrograde guide uh, by rotation as you can appreciate here you rotate it goes out and amplifies uh, out of the of the epicardial artery and then it can be retrieved and as you will appreciate here <coughs> uh, this is uh, the drug looting stand that it has been implanted in the LAD by having uh, the crushing balloon uh, into the circumflex uh, so uh, the if at this point we had the the externalized wire uh, through the LAD that would have not been possible because you cannot sure. crush uh, the externalized wire that's exactly what I was referring and the fact that they have decided to use the uh, uh, to crush uh, the LAD stent uh, that what forced me actually to retrieve the, the retrograde uh, uh, the, the RG3. Uh, so after doing that, uh, some more predilatation as you can appreciate here into the circumflex. Uh, the LAD stent has already been crushed, and what it has someone has to appreciate is that very extensive calcification. Uh, into the ostium of the LAD. Despite that we went into the 24 atmospheres, we were not able to fully deploy uh, the, the stent, uh, to fully expand the stent in the ostium of the LAD. Uh, and rotoblator might have been uh, recommended here, uh, but we didn't do it. Uh, I think that it was a mistake not to do a rotoblation over there, despite the predilatations. Uh, retrospectively seen about how the stands have been expanded. Uh, another 3.5 by 34 stand has been now deployed uh, into the direction of the circumflex uh, with uh, the uh, LAD covering the ostium and of course the mini crush stand. You see the result here. We did pot but I, uh, unfortunately it was not filmed. It has to be done. And then we had kissing balloon dilatation uh, 3.5 by 15, uh, both of these, and uh, oh. then we did post pot with a 4.0 stent, uh, post kiss pot with a 4.0 stent uh, to the left main, and uh, that's uh, that's our final result. Uh, as referring to to bifurcation techniques, I just want to say that. Uh, uh, the post kiss pot is as essential as the pre kiss pot. So I always do it, uh, especially when the vessel is involving the left main, which is a bigger vessel, as we know, both from the LAD and the circumflex. Perfect. You do, you do two, two pots. You do before and after. Just the, the wiring is easier when you do before, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, the the, the pre-pot is just to uh, to uh, ensure that the guide wire would cross the right uh, strut, and the post-pot is to make sure that uh, your proximal stand will be spherical. Perfect. Well, this is a wonderful case. I mean, many, many lessons here, both on the CTO front, on the bifurcation front, the calcification front. Um, it's a great case. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Manos. If there are no comments more to that case, uh, let's move to uh, another case to show you. Uh, let me see uh, which one uh, should we choose first. Uh, I'll show you this uh, case. It was done in Istanbul last week. Uh, it's a nice bifurcation case, and the interest of this case is that uh, it is involving uh, the, uh, the bifurcation of the cracks that has already uh, a stand uh, being deployed some time ago. So it's, it's, it's a man that had in his past a, uh, a PCI into the distal circumflex that covered uh, the bifurcation, and the stand was extending LUC from uh, the main vessel to the PLA covering the PDA. Then uh, he got the cabbage uh, a couple of years later with vein grafts in the marginal, the RCA, and the lima in the LAD. He got a PCI in his LAD in 2008. He kept on having an PCI in the graft, 
And then he presented again uh, eight years later with class three angina, uh, and there was reversible ischemia in the inferior wall. So uh, this guy, uh, you see his right coronary artery here, it's occluded. Uh, this is a projection which is cranial. It's not very well visible here, but there is a stand. You will see it better uh, as the procedure is going on through. And uh, you see that the occlusion is very close to the cracks. And uh, it's a long occlusion, uh, around 10 centimeters. Uh, you see there, up to this marginal branch, there is some, uh, let's say, uh, continuity. And then we lose the vessel. Uh, so here, if someone focuses on the distal part, uh, you might be able to uh, to, to see uh, the details that uh, we don't exactly understand uh, if there is penetration and contrast and which direction, so on and so forth. And you see here a stand also into uh, the, uh, the vein graft. I want to clarify the anatomy just by finishing the case to you uh, that we learned about the insertion of the graft as we were doing the case, but I'm just showing to you the situation. So there was a stand that it was covering uh, the bifurcation and uh, there was instant occlusion up to this point and this neointima formation was also involving the ostium of the PLA. In this angiogram is not yet visible but I'm telling you as the case will proceed and you will see that there was an occlusion of the vein graft that the insertion of the vein graft was very close uh, to the distal uh, anastomosis. Uh, so we have an instant plus more in, uh, occlusion in the proximal right and involving this bifurcation plus uh, the insertion of the vein graft. Uh, what we did and in those stents were old? Those stents were old, the stent in the PDA and the, and the graft? The stent in the PDA was 12 years old, but uh, he had an acute coronary syndrome and he has inferior ischemia. So we assume there uh, that uh, exactly the pathology as to why uh, this happened uh, and why this appears to be uh, as acute coronary syndrome involving that, uh, uh, it was a question to us also. But after the angiograms and, uh, uh, and the scanning that they did after the angiogram, it was the only target in, in a very big artery uh, that we could uh, have assumed. That's because also not uncommon. Okay. You also see many times people who have CTOs, but then they start acting up later on, and it's unclear, as you say, why exactly that happens, but this is the only culprit then that, that makes exactly. sense to fix it. Maybe the worsening into the collateral circulation, Manos, we have been talking about that for some time uh, by means of, uh, let's say, that although anatomically look the same, but functionally they might not be, they contribute to the appearance of symptoms, uh, even in a collateralized vessel after some time as the aging proceeds. Perfect. So, then it's so what to summarize, you have a clear cap, right? But it's a long occlusion. You have distal stand, and you have bifurcation distal cap. So many, many levels of complexity here. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so in this case, uh, the way that we decided to approach the lesion for myself, um, if I, uh, if when I saw the film and we were talking about the strategy before we do it, I said that the probability of crossing through uh, undergradely only is very low. Uh, but uh, when I have, especially for the right coronary arteries, uh, this kind of anatomy, I always go to the uh, guiding catheter as assisted uh, uh, reverse card. So uh, I go on the grade uh, aggressively by knuckle wires or whichever other means uh, anybody wants to dissect, even by devices. Uh, and then you advance your uh, guiding catheter extension as distal as possible but not uh, distal from the, of course, the distal cap. You don't dissect that. And then you shift to the retrograde in order to be able to conclude uh, an intervention. In very long occlusions of the right coronary artery, that there are not many branches, uh, that's my policy. But here also, you might have to do a double retrograde, right? because the PDA looks like it's occluded as well. You have a stand there. So there's a possibility. This is one consideration. Continue. This is one consideration. The last case that I'm going to show you is a double retrograde. but. In this uh, case, uh, and this is part of the discussion as far as how do you really puncture your distal cap is crucial. There are two ways that it might happen. If you are able to puncture the distal cap properly, as I'm going to, 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 to show you in details and in cartoons, then you might be able 
to still keep the access of the ostium undegradably after the recanalization of uh, the main vessel or not, and then you might need to do double retrograde. So it depends a little bit on, on the way that you're going to puncture the distal, the distal cap in these cases. So you see here uh, one wire, it's a Gaia second wire supported by, uh, this is uh, a fine cross microcatheter, and we did anchoring also into this uh, side branch. Uh, I, I didn't use an uh, amplet guiding here. This is a six French uh, to both sides, uh, if, I, if I recall well. Uh, so uh, fine cross plus Gaia uh, second at the beginning. There was a progress in the wire. Uh, and uh, here, as you can appreciate, we, we exchanged. There is some problems with the videos playing, and I apologize about that. I don't know why this is happening. But anyway, <clears throat> you see that we made quite a lot of progress. Uh, but then I tried to knuckle, as you can appreciate here, the Gaia. And I had some hard lessons about this, uh, and this is not the first, the only case only. Uh, Gaia wires, especially the stiffer ones, the second and the third, at the beginning we were knuckling, but probably because we were knuckling software vessels, they were behaving well. But when you knuckle these wires, they do have a tendency of breaking. And that's exactly what happened to me in this case. So uh, the Gaia third was broken, and then when I was trying to retrieve the wire, the wire started decoiling. And uh, uh, what I had to do here is that, please follow this one carefully, I completely decoiled the wire over the microcatheter, as you can appreciate here. You know that the guy is, they do have a, a long radio pack tip, uh, which is from the coil, it's not from the core. And then uh, after completely decoiling the wire, I was pulling and pulling and pulling, it was a very long coil, then uh, you see that the radio pack tip is decreasing. And at a certain point, uh, you feel resistance that it cannot be decoiled more. So essentially, when you decoil completely the, uh, the coil, then you keep your microcatheter closed, and then you pull back everything as one unit. Uh, and that's exactly what we see here. And what happened is that you see, oh, I'm just going to show it again one more time, is that uh, the, the wire is coming back. It jumps into the proximal right coronary artery, and then essentially it's breaking, and only a small tip of your wire remain into the vessel. I was hoping not to have that, but the biggest disaster in this case is if you don't retrieve properly, uh, is that you will uncoil your wire that it will extend in the aorta, and that's exactly what you don't want. There are many ways that you can keep on doing job. Uh, even if, if you do that, you can take uh, different wires, uh, normal wires, and wrap it around the decoil part and retrieve it again. So there are solutions to that. People are using also sometimes snares. Uh, or you go and you dilate uh, the place in, into the artery in order to be able to release the pressure. It's a, it's a big topic of discussion, but the way that I handled in this year, I completely decoiled the Gaia. And whenever the decoiling was not anymore coming, I pulled everything out. And I was able to take 99% uh, out of the wire, leaving only the radio pack uh, tip in, into the occlusive part, which is not a problem, but I didn't have any part of the wire extending. And did you do any eye to check it didn't go in the order? Because you say that's the key problem here. No, we didn't or you do eye was very confident that. I was very confident because uh, the cord came out and uh, there was nothing. Because I, when I retrieved the, the microcatheter, was wedged. So it was not possible that you will have more coil out. So I was always, during the decoiling, keeping the, the microcatheter as much as possible wedged into the tip of the wire. Uh, but anyway, at this time point, there was nothing to be done more. Uh, we did an IVUS at the end to, uh, uh, to, to see whether there was anything there, and it was not. But at this time point, my focus was still into the uh, treating the, the CTO and, and not what happened with that. I was quite pleased by what happened there, and I left this small part of the wiring. Sure. And here, so here you had the six friend you said, fine cross, uh, and, and also a, a, an anchor balloon on the marginal, right? Yes, exactly. So you couldn't use the Corsair with the six friends. The only five is the only one you could use because of the small of the diameter. Of the exactly. Corsair. So my setting until now, and that's why materials are making difference, is that I was always using one French guiding larger into the donor artery as compared to the uh, occluded. Uh, there are many many different ways of thinking, 
I am, uh, let's say, a supporter of the minimal uh, CTO PCI, so I like even to use five French and six French. Uh, I'm not very much into the eight French, and I'm not using too much I was guided punctures. So that's not my style. There's nothing wrong with uh, doing that or not doing it. It's just a matter of a style. And the more you train yourself to react in the certain circumstances and acquainted with different materials. Uh, so very rarely I use eight, or if, if never. And uh, until now that I had the Corsair as my uh, retrograde microcatheter, I was always using seven for the undergrade guide and six for, for the retrograde guide and six for the undergrade. Uh, now that we have the caravels and the turnpikes and this and that, most of the times I go uh, two times six, uh, and I use both radials now. In the past, I was using radial femoral, but also the new sheets that they allow you to make smaller um, uh, hole into the radial artery. They might allow you to use six French puncture and have seven French guides. So there are solutions, and people need to know the details of the materials. So the next thing that we do, man, are we okay to proceed? Perfect. All right. So what we did is uh, the, the hole has been uh, already created. Uh, so actually the puncture and the gradely was done. So what I did here is that uh, I forward, as you can appreciate here again, a knuckle wire and went easily all the way down, supported my, the microcatheter. And uh, then uh, what I did is that I did a pre-dilatation. And uh, after, of course, loading uh, the, the guiding cutter extension into the uh, guiding, you see that over the uh, dilatation balloon, uh, I am advancing the uh, the guiding cutter extension. I think it was a guide zilla uh, in this uh, case. So that was the plan. You see a dilatation with a 2.5 by this is a 30 millimeter balloon, it's not 20. And over this inflated balloon, after having predilated all the the um, uh, initial part, uh, then uh, I advanced the microcatheter. So I achieved what I had in mind, at least referring to the undergrade part. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yes, as you can appreciate here, I am advancing the microcatheter, the guiding catheter station even longer. So I have reduced a, a 10 centimeter occlusion into a two or three uh, centimeter occlusion. One other benefit in this case is that the presence of a stent prohibiting the undergrade wire of getting into the direction of the true lumen because if you go outside of the wire, your knuckle certainly is going to, to be guided away. So there was, there was a level of security over there as you can uh, appreciate. Here you see the surfing that we have been talking. That was the time that I said, okay, undergrade is enough and uh, we did the surfing here. You can appreciate here, I have my microcaster into the guiding. This is again a filter FC wire. Uh, and this is a caravel microcatheter at this time. You saw how the surfing it works. It goes there, uh, and then just just the wire, and it has to be <laughs> an agile wire, as I'm saying. And you see that uh, as the first thing also, the wire is crossing, and then it goes, and it goes outside the stand. It's obvious here. Uh, at that time, we didn't know that there was a bypass there. Uh, but retrospectively, we've seen the case uh, uh, it, it starts, you start understanding the anatomy as you go through. So, uh, and I think this is a six French guiding too. So we have two times six here. Uh, you saw this crossing and uh, unfortunately, uh, again, uh, the caravel was not able to cross. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, sometimes with uh, the sepal surfing is happening or it's happening more often as compared to when you do dedicated uh, uh, injections, uh, tip injections, or you select branches that are more continuous and you can see them. Uh, we didn't insist, to be honest with you, very much because there was another bigger uh, branch uh, down there that it was very easily crossed, as you can appreciate here. And then the same microcatheter was able to follow that. That's another solution. You change the branch, okay, as we said. How, how long? So you do that quickly or you wait? I mean, that's also a conversation, right? Do you do it quickly or do you just try for a few minutes or? I don't know what uh, your depend, thoughts are depending, depending, uh, depending a little bit on, uh, I always individualize manos because if it takes you 50 minutes to cross one branch and then uh, there are no very good branches available, then you don't pull your wire back. Uh, I, am, I always have the principle, don't lose what you got. Uh, but in this case, the collateral circulation was so extensive that I didn't want to change the monocrocasset that I wanted to insist on that. And I was a little bit committed because I have a six French 
undergrad guiding and go into a course area at this time point wouldn't have been uh, what I wanted to do because I wouldn't be able to trap and uh, remove and put a new guiding. You have to get guiding after uh, guide wire extensions and this kind of stuff afterwards. And I wanted to do a, a fixed range uh, bilateral case. So as you can appreciate here, through this bigger collateral, the Caravel uh, has been able to be advanced uh, easily without any problem. And uh, we make here the, the first tip injection to see the anatomy, and then it becomes clear that there is a tapering, but the tapering goes outside of the, uh, of the main uh, of, of the stand. Uh, and this was the first time that we got the impression that there was uh, an, uh, uh, an anastomosis over there. You clearly see the stand that it is running over uh, this, um, uh, let's say, uh, tapering. And you see also that uh, the osteum of the side branch is also diseased, so the, the uh, of the posterior lateral. So it's, this is more or less the anatomy as we show you at the beginning. So in this case, that's a little bit of a uh, close-up uh, that shows the uh, the the situation. And uh, uh, that's exactly what happened here: is that uh, we put the guy a third retrogradely. I can apologize about our. Uh, uh, video is not playing very well. I don't know why, despite the new machines. Anyway, what happened here is that uh, clearly the wire went and it went far away, and uh, uh, we had this marker here in the in the graft, uh, and it was obvious that we were puncturing the not the distal cup but the direction to to the vein graft. So we had to go on back, and at this time uh, we made exactly a, a different way. A guy a third uh, was pulled back, and then we targeted the stand, uh, and uh, here you see these two close-ups, as you said. If you puncture here, that what you appear on the top, when you dilate, you will shift the plug in, in towards the direction of the side branch, and then you will need a double retrograde. If you puncture closer uh, to the osteum of the PLA, and uh, you're able uh, to leave this space free, then during the undergrade injection, you might keep again access to the branch, and you might not need an undergrade, a retrograde, but you will need an undergrade access to this uh, branch. Uh, you will see what happened to us. Uh, but first thing first, uh, we were able to redirect in the stand this time, as you can appreciate, uh, and then uh, in different directions, uh, uh, we will check the progress of this wire. It was going into the right direction, heading in the way of uh, the guiding extension, and we check in different projections. It was looking good, as you can appreciate here. And uh, afterwards, uh, what happened is that uh, we concluded the reverse card. We took a 3-0 balloon here. We inflate the balloon, and uh, this resulted in an easy uh, direction of the retrograde wire into the guiding caster extension. And then we followed uh, the technique, these are things that are well known. Uh, we externalized... Uh, 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 can sorry, I ask sorry. A quickly for a couple yes, of yes, questions? Mano, the sorry, first sorry. One, the the yes, first one ahead. is uh, for a so couple of things. So here in the US, people like to cross the stand. So sometimes like you have this, uh, if, even if you go outside the stand, people can do that and then you just cross the stand and it seems to be going okay, at least in preliminary results. That's number one. And number two, do you ever do the Carlino in cases like this, just with a little contrast and see if we can redirect your wire? I don't see value of Carlino in instant restenosis, especially when, not, when you're not completely used of where you go. I had cases that were not, of course, bifurcational, but what you say, I have a beautiful case. Uh, it was a uh, 10 centimeter long instant in the right coronary artery <laughs> that was done in Croatia six months ago. And uh, we went in and out the stand through the length of these 10 centimeters. And the one, of course, you distort the stand by going subintimal and then re-entering, then you see what is possible. So certainly you can crush the stand uh, to any extent, uh, depending on how they were was crossing. But when you do bifurcations, that's not advisable because if we crush the stand in this case, I, I will think it will completely complicate the way that you will get access to the PLA. If it's in a straight vessel without a bifurcation or any big branch, I think there is no problem to do that. 
So uh, one of the problems that we had here is that uh, certainly we have the retrograde wire into the guiding cutter extension, and uh, but the micro cutter was not able to be advanced into the um, uh, into the stand. And the way that we uh, face, we handled that is that we took a retrograde balloon, 1.25 by 15 monorail, the old good stuff, as we say, that we were doing back in uh, 2005, 2006. And uh, uh, we pushed the retrograde monorail balloon through the septal, 1.25. And as you can appreciate here, uh, we dilate the, I deeply apologize about the videos. Uh, uh, we dilated the ostium, the entry to the distal cup with a uh, 1.25 millimeter balloon. That's a cartoon here. Uh, and this one, because otherwise we're not able to get in, and this one facilitated the advancement, as you can appreciate here, uh, of uh, our microcatheter uh, uh, in uh, further in order to be able to, here you see how the microcatheter goes through, yep. uh, in yep. order to be able Still to the facilitate. Yes, that's a caravel. We insisted on this caravel. Perfect. So uh, that's how we externalize uh, the... Uh, retrograde uh, 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 guide wire uh, and afterwards what happened here is that after the externalization uh, we uh, were facing uh, the problem of uh, that we didn't have uh, the access to the branch and here uh, what we did is that we insert a dual lumen microcatheter uh, because uh, the main uh, there is another branch there uh, you see this appearance of this one is a dual lumen microcatheter, and it, uh, this is an enhancer RX, and I am committed to this uh, to this one because this is the only French, the only microcatheter that it is uh, uh, compatible with doing trapping in the six French. It has the the um, uh, uh, the thinner profile as compared to the others in the market. I think Freddy has shown you in one of the previous uh, webcasts uh, the same thing. So with six French, you can advance this and you can remove it by trapping. Uh, this is the appearance. It has uh, uh, two markers. And next to the proximal market, actually, is the exit of the wire. And you can see how we got access into the PLA because of the right distal capture, so this distal puncture. So we were able to get access uh, with uh, undergradely, and this was not necessitating uh, an, uh, a retrograde uh, procedure for the PLA. You see here the dilatation, and then through the microcatheter, we were able to push a wire that's uh, a cartoon explaining the situation. And that's a little bit of what happened there. Of course, the vessel was not occluded. Actually, and that's exactly yeah, what... Actually, you know, it's interesting. I love you crossing it with the Sion. So m many of us here would use like a pilot, like a stiffer wire, but it looks like the soft wire did well. Is that your common strategy for this? Do a little I bit soft use, wire? I, I will never use a, a stiff wire, Manos, uh, by doing that. Because this is not, uh, a, let's say, the same procedure as you're using for stick and swap technique. Uh, uh, we we do have a little bit of a different culture in Europe, uh, wrong or right. Uh, pilot is 2% uh, of our practice, is not more than that. And uh, because I want to respect the anatomy over there, if a soft wire wasn't going to go there and I have to use a stiffer wire, Potentially, there is a little bit of a risk, a higher risk of dissecting, and I didn't want that. I would have shifted to a retrograde rather than uh, using a stiffer wire. Of course, through this procedure, I was not entirely sure exactly how I entered, because you always put the theoretical scenario that you puncture right, but until you're able to cross, you don't know if one-tenth of a millimeter more proximal or more distal during the distal cap puncture was the right. So I just wanted to to go with the soft wire, always soft, getting access to side branches. So we don't use uh, stiff wires. Uh, more or less, you know that because of the 0 0.75 millimeter profile as compared to the others, this is microcatheter, this specific one, is compatible to be retrieved by uh, trapping at, in a six French guide. That's why I am doing We used a low profile microcatheter for the retrograde, just like the Caravel. You use a low-profile dual lumen microcatheter, and you are able to do all these maneuvers with six French. Again, I'm not advertising that. It's just a matter of taste for what is possible. Operators can choose whatever they want. But if you have a six French and you want to use a microcatheter, dual lumen microcatheter, not using a wire extension, but by doing trapping, you have to commit to that. 
but you can use bigger uh, guiding and do trapping with, with other microcatheters available, just like the fine duo or the twin pass, or you can do that with six wrench and use a guide wire extension and use also the others. So it's just a matter to know your materials. So you see here that we were able to uh, to put the wire into the PLA, and uh, that's exactly what I'm telling you. You see here, we retrieve the dual lumen microcatheter, as you can appreciate here. Uh, so you see here, the dual lumen is coming back. Again, I'm saying six wrench. And then uh, a balloon will come, as you will appreciate here. Uh, and then trapping will happen here. So that's how we retrieve the microcatheter. And if I go further now, we start then uh, pre dilatation that's, that's another thing that we discussed before. One of our externalized wires here, Manos, is the RG3, which we kept. Here you see the caravel. So I didn't change the wire, and the other wire is the Sion into the PLA. And in this case, we were also committing to the mini crash, as you can appreciate here, by keeping the retrograde wire. But what is most important in this case is that you do not crash uh, over the externalized wire. Here is an Orsiro 2.5 by 26. And then after crashing, we retrieve the wire of the PLA and we, plus, uh, we put another uh, desk there. And afterwards, uh, another desk in the proximal part of the right coronary artery, following by kissing balloon uh, over the bifurcation and uh, I think that's the final result uh, of the uh, of the case. And you see that there is a very big uh, right coronary artery, and the bifurcation uh, was uh, uh, respected. Uh, the other thing is that you see there was nothing here. The the, the broken wire has been trapped. So well, this is a beautiful case, and actually, it's, uh, as you said, it's beautiful that you maintain both branches. Now, if uh, you, you were not able to wire the PL using the dual lumen microcatheter, would you have gone retrograde for this, or would you have left it for now? What is your usual strategy for those? Now, what I would have done, Mano, I would have tried to go retrograde uh, to see whether I can make the connection. There was not any very obvious branch available, so I would have kept it uh, not very insistive, especially after that. What I would have done is that I would have done uh, an ACL procedure into the PLA. Uh, so I would have taken potentially a pilot 150 uh, or initially uh, a an, uh, field recipient ACL or a field T to get access to the branch subintimally and then dilate uh, but uh, not standing the bifurcation. That's what I would have done. I wouldn't have done if I have knuckled down to the PLA uh, a mini crush. Uh, I would have extended uh, the occlusion in the direction of the of the uh, PDA, and I would have left the dissected PLA without standing to heal. Kind of like an investment, and then come back in a few months and hopefully. More or less, more or less, yes, yes, exactly, an investment procedure. It's always a it. dilemma. We like to have the both branches, but let's say you spend a lot of contrast getting here in radiation. Uh, sometimes, you know, had a similar case myself that it's always nice to maybe just leave it and come back another day. Absolutely, yes. Well, this has been great cases. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, we all learned a lot today from from those two cases. Uh, there's a couple of questions that came that have uh, come from people watching over here. One of them is in terms of the microcasters in the U.S. You only have the twin pass right now. We don't have the enhancer RX that you just showed us. So, in which case, I guess you would recommend uh, larger guides to be able to do what you just did, or long wire. Yes, as I told you, if I didn't have the availability of the microcatheter, I would have used an uh, uh, in my case, because I most of the time commit to a six French, I would have used a guide wire extension. Uh, but as I said, because the majority of the cases people are using seven French, then in these cases there's no problem. You can do trapping with any kind of dual lumen microcatheter available. And I know that in US, uh, seven French is uh, it is the standard at least, if not bigger microcatheter and bigger guiding catheters. So if you use 7 or 8, then there is absolutely no problem. You can apply any any technique uh, freely and any material. Wonderful. Again, I would like to thank you very, very much for this wonderful uh, case presentations. Again, I think everyone learned a lot today. Um, we're delighted to have you on board. We will post it soon on YouTube so people can watch it at other times. So again, thank you so much. It was a wonderful presentation. Thanks for your team. And we're delighted to have had you on the webcast. 
Thank you very much, Manos. We failed to show you the double retrograde done a couple of days ago. Potentially, we will do it in the next session. It was our privilege to participate. And sorry for the technical inconveniences. Thank you again. Thank you very Thank much. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.